Well, hello. Today, I'd like to welcome you to my first impressions of a pen I've never heard of before. This was sent to me by a pen pal who lives in the UK. Uh, I won't be any more identifying than that in case uh, he doesn't want me to be. And uh, yeah, I'm, I don't think I've ever seen it for sale in the US market, so I'm wondering if it's uh, one of those European only pens. Europe does have more of a fountain pen culture than we do here. So, although it's growing here, thanks to people like Nathan Tardif, uh, even though he's not American, SBRE Brown, uh, Brian Goulet, the Andersons, and people like that. So uh, maybe someday. So let's take a look at it. So the pen itself is a Parker Reflex. He sent it to me in its original packaging, which makes me think it must be currently for sale. Uh, the modern kind of take on the feathers is sort of echoed there. Parker, and then all this other business. He also sent along a converter, in case I didn't have one. And it's a medium nib, and there's a cartridge enclosed, but I will save it for later. And then the back has the same thing in several languages. Medium stainless nib, erratic and washable blue ink refillable with Parker Quink cartridges to your warranty. And then down here, you know, again, lots of other languages here, Sanford Brands, Mark. And then we have stuff about it being French. And some more stuff, if that means anything to anybody. So let's... Uh, First, let's just take, this is one of those uh, plastic bits of packaging that I generally despise. And I always have a pair of scissors over here, except right now when I actually need a pair of scissors over here. Luckily, it's a small house. I want to, like, destroy this as little as possible. I don't care about the plastic. But in case the cardboard turns out to be interesting for some reason. I mean, it doesn't look like it is, but every so often you destroy a package and you're like, Oh, I should have kept that. Wayne. It's like watching a really painful unboxing video. I may edit some of this out. <laughs> All righty. I'll leave the pen, the scissors over here, because I'll need them again someday. Wee! <laughs> I just kind of exploded open. Through the cartridge, luckily not the pen. And I'll be needing the converter here in a minute, so... Ah! I think that the cardboard is going to be salvaged. Parker has its own proprietary converter, but they do fit in several pens. Aurora for sure, I'm not sure what else. Okay, so now, this is interesting. Because this is showing some signs of age. So I wonder if this is new old stock. Yeah, the paint is kind of coming off on my fingers. And it is indeed a medium nib. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, if I cap the pen to do a more traditional type of picture. It's a pretty unassuming plain black pen and some white on there nothing on that finial nothing really on that finial the feathers now you can get a better look at them sort of seem to echo the more modern style but then this line down the clip is new uh, i thought when i capped it ah that is i mean it caps it's very unsatisfying it feels better uncapping it because then you feel a bit of a click but yeah it, it you gotta click if you're a pen dog darn it so, I don't know if it's suitable as an eyedropper, but, you know. 
nope, it's not. I uh, what I did is I blew into into it, and uh, air comes out around that finial. Okay, I kind of didn't think it would be a suitable eyedropper, but you never know. And I'm not, I don't eyedropper too much anyway. It's just not my bag. I'm gonna put some quink blue in it. I've had some thoughts recently that I should do. You know, use always the same ink for these videos. And this, or quink black, or maybe blue black, would all be contenders for that. So the, con con the converter fits in quite deeply. You get a bare hint of an ink window here. Lots of nice bubbleage. More bubbling. And a third time. And not really any bubbling that time. Clean it off. I don't know, that is almost reminding me of like a Parker 45. I don't know about you, but that's something I'm thinking of. Not really make me think of the vector or anything, just but 45 is coming to mind, just maybe not with that grip. Uh, okay, made in the UK. And there is a date code here. Which I don't want to look up right now. Actually, what the heck? Oops, I can just edit this part out. Okay, so my first impression was right. This is a little bit older pen. Uh, the date code on it, if you can make that out in this lighting, is an EIII, which puts it in 2008, according to parkerpens.net. Um, I'm guessing that's the first quarter. I'm not sure. Yeah, first quarter probably. Alrighty, so let's do a writing sample. I don't know if Parker has changed its formulation on this ink since I was a kid, but I, I remember it as being a much more faded blue. It's actually not a bad color. Although apparently it has its issues, so flex, I always write that word. Not that I'm expecting flex and you know not with a steel nib for sure. Well, okay. Not with this steel nib, we'll, we'll say that. Because steel, some of my steel nibs are very flexy. Uh, wetness and flow, I think you can tell. It's, it is. Uh, smear test. I'm expecting some smearage, especially since uh, up where I did the hash mark under flex, part of that is still wet. Yeah, that's that's wet. And finally, reverse writing. And finally, the world famous Pierre Gustafson test. And then my version of it was, which is always just scribbles. Either way, yeah. One other test I always like to do. I totally missed my pocket there. That was my fault. Yeah, that slides right on, doesn't catch on the way out. Good pen for the pocket. So what do I think? Uh, I like it. I, uh... These rubber sections can always be interesting. Like I have a Intuos Wacom, not endorsing a brand, just telling you what I have, a graphics tablet that came with a rubberized grip on the pen. And after a while, it got really gross. Um, and I worry about that with a pen. 
and uh, you know, especially the paint is kind of coming off on this one. I read a suggestion. Now take this with a grain of salt. User beware. Uh, but I read a suggestion to clean those gross rubbery grip sections off with isopropyl ink. Now be careful. Don't get it on the other parts of your pen. It can be really nasty to some pen finishes uh, and some pen parts. Only the rubberized grip, but I am told that that will help restore them. Uh, I don't know that, but that's what I have been told. So, uh, you know, hopefully I'll keep this pen around long enough to I'll get to find out. So, I want to thank you for watching, and I just want you to remember that this is a first impression, and first impressions change. Um, last, I see, what made me think of that, I looked over at the camcorder that does the writing sample for a second. Last week I did a first impression of a reform pen, and uh, I'd forgotten to turn that camera on, the one you can't see. Uh, because, and uh, so then I had to film the writing sample. It turned out to be several weeks later. Well, my opinion of the pen had changed quite a bit in those intervening few weeks. So that's always a weakness of these first impressions. My impression may change with use. We'll see. So I uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.